Welcome to my talk about underwater photography at ADEX 2021. My name is Simon Lorenz and today in my talk I will be covering how to make people look good underwater and also if you are in the photo, how you can look good in the photo. Okay, so how to look great underwater, the complete guide to underwater modeling. Like I said, this is a, a presentation that will include tips for both the photographer and the model. Just a few words about myself. My name is uh, Simon Lorenz, I'm German, I've been living in Hong Kong for many, many years. I'm a scuba diver, a tech diver, a free diver. I like everything about being underwater. Primarily I'm an underwater photographer and I write articles for magazines, but I'm also a paddy instructor and I've been working as a photo coach for many years. Um, about four years ago I started uh, my company Insider Divers. We're a travel company and so what we do is we do guided group travel. So essentially um, that's what we offer. And uh, I also am supported by various brands that make my work a lot more possible and easier. Um, those are Isotta for my housings and then Hollis Bear and Atomic provide me with underwater equipment. So thanks to those guys. So why talk about underwater modeling? Well, you might just want to have good photos from your next holiday or you want to just look good next to an animal, so that is already a photo that makes lots of people happy. But maybe you want to be part of a photo. Maybe you want to be the reason why a photograph looks better. Like in this photograph, the model really adds the picture and the elegance of the manta ray gets enforced by the model being in the picture. Actually, you could say that most wide angle photos are better when you have a model in there. We've got so much space in there that we can actually place a model in there and create a better photo. So I can only advise when you're taking photos, your buddy should always be modeling for you. So you should talk about this in advance. And if you're both photographers even better, you can always pose for each other. So if somebody's got a good shot, then make sure that you offer to be a model in that picture. Here's some examples. Here's a painted frogfish and it's quite hard to actually spot him, but if you have a model in the picture looking towards the frogfish, it's much easier to spot. Also in this picture, if you're shooting up a wall with a big um, coral there, you know, if you put a photographer or a model in the top right hand corner, you're balancing out the picture and you're creating a much more interesting photograph. With a model in the picture, when you have clear water like here in bikini, you can create a sense of scale. You can convey how big uh, some of these things are. Here you can create depth of field by placing a, a, a diver in the outside of this uh, wreck in Truck Lagoon, we can create a depth of field. Here in Tubataha, the model helps to show how big this huge coral block is. And here in Mexico, we can see just how big these humpback whales are because there are humans in the picture to show a size of scale. You can also emphasize the, you can also emphasize the scale by placing a, a model smart, which means further away than your actual subject, making this oceanic manta ray in Socorro look even bigger than uh, it actually is. Here we have a baby shark and you can see that the baby shark looks really big, whereas the model, in this case my wife, looks much smaller. So what you can do is you can really change the emphasis on the subject. Sometimes the model can just be helping to balance out a picture. If you just had jacks in blue, it would be less interesting than this girl looking at the jacks. Here we've got a, a close-up picture of a Napoleon in the Red Sea, and you can see my entire dive group is here in the background, which makes it very an additional element, makes it a lot more interesting to look at. It can also add the human factor, the sense of experiencing your wildlife or interacting with your wildlife if the model, like in this case in Palau, participates looking at the turtle. Here we've got a photographer and a, a group of fish and it seems like the fish are swimming away from the photographer so we're creating much more layers to this photo by adding a model. Here's an example from the Fujikawa Maru in Truck Lagoon of a Telegraph at the, on the bridge and with a diver in the back. It just looks much more interesting. What we do is we transport the sense of exploration, the sense of going diving. We, we bring the viewer to experience what it would be if he were a diver or she were a diver in this particular situation. You can also help to tell a story. Like here we've got a, uh, a guide in Socorro blowing the bubbles that the manta rays really enjoy and you can see how they're really enjoying those bubbles. That's a story. That's a thing that's specific to this area and by adding the diver in you're creating that story. 
Here, also in Socorro, you can see a diver swimming with the dolphins. That's something that you can do there, is if you swim in the same way, they will imitate this behavior, and so you create a story of human and dolphin playing together. Or here we've got, you know, the uh, handlers on the boat throwing small bits of fish towards the sharks, and therefore you can see that this whole story of being, you know, the, the, the divers on the boat with the bucket in the hand and the sharks under the waterline creating a bigger story. Here you've got another situation where sharks are swimming around the bait bucket. So another type of showing how human and sharks together can create a model. Here we have the photographer in Chinchurro Banks on the boat with the crocodile under the water. Or here we've got a diver catching a manatee taking a fart. So this is always a story and if you can add these things to uh, your photos it adds quite a lot of layers. So let's start with a few model tips that help not only the model be a better model, but also the photographers knowing what they want to do with a person in the picture. Here's an example, right? We've got a turtle and we've got some divers in the back, but there's no added value because they're just swimming about completely unstructured. The reality is if you want to be part of a good photo and if you want to have somebody in the photo to make the photo better, you're going to have to work together. Here you can see my buddy diving perfectly with me, creating a perfect photograph. At least I like the photograph a lot like this. Now it looks like the turtle is looking at me and the diver is an additional layer to the photograph in the back. Essentially we got to decide two different ways of how to look at a model. One is when the model is far away. In that case the most important thing is how the body is positioned. The second situation is when the subject is closer and now the face gets lit up by the strobe and the face and the facial expressions are all part of your whole composition. So then you have to think of more things. So we're going to start with the further away, which is what you have a silhouette. That's when you are further away and it's just the body form that is relevant. Where should the model be is the first question. Well, here you have an example of the biggest tiger shark I've ever seen. This was in Hawaii. And you can see that the model, unfortunately, is closer than the tiger shark. So the tiger shark seems very small. That is just a sense of perspective. And you can see in this picture is the smallest tiger shark I've ever seen. This was maybe a one and a half meter to two meter tiger shark in Bikini Atoll. And this tiger shark is closer to me than the diver who doesn't even see him and therefore it seems a big tiger shark. Now if you compare the picture before, biggest tiger shark that you've ever seen and here smallest tiger shark I've ever seen, you can see that where you position the diver or the model is quite important. So if you put the diver like in this picture way behind the, the subject, then the subject seems huge and all the focus is on the subject. The diver is a side story creating depth of field. Right? Here we've got some clownfish with a diver behind. Just makes the clownfish look much bigger. Where should you be there for? You should always be in the top right hand corner if the subject's in the bottom left or otherwise in the other corner. Generally it's good if you position yourself in what would be our negative space. Right, so here, if we make the rule of thirds, you can see the manatee is lined up with this uh, bottom crosshair of uh, the uh, rule of thirds, which means that opposite of that is where our negative space is. In the top left, you can see the negative space, and that's where our divers are. So in this negative space is where you would like to position your divers, creating that depth of field. Here you can now see that this uh, in Crystal River in, in Florida is totally not crystal, it's extremely murky conditions showing the kind of situation we're in. Here we've got a diver quite opposite of the main area of the picture, perfect position. We're actually creating sort of a diagonal. If you place the diver on the opposite end of your picture, you can create a, so, a sort of diagonal, not a visual one. Like here, we've got a visual one where we're using the torch to shine diagonal. No, but the position of the diver is actually in a one of the corners, making it easier to look at a silhouetted diver. We're talking about divers that are far away. So that's why the diver is small, and therefore you would like them to be on the, the opposite end of your on the opposite of your subject. If you are swimming like this diver, you want to swim into the picture, not out of the picture. Into the picture is a much better way to position yourself. You can see also the diver on the left, they're all swimming into the picture. It's a much more natural way of looking at it. 
Definitely you don't want to swim with your feet closer to the camera because it's going to make you have a really tiny head with huge feet. So you don't want to do that. Your fins should always in a have a tendency to be further away from, uh, from the photographer than your head. Your overall body position is very important. Here you've got a very uh, good body positioned uh, side mount diver in a cenote. That is a good body position. Here you've got a free diver with a good body position. I want to explain a little bit what good body position means. It's very important that you don't fin kick while we take the photo. That's what I call a swim fart. It looks like he's doing a fart, but actually he's just doing his frog kick, right? So actually I was the person who did the wrong picture. I should have waited for him to do that. But essentially very often we see that if the divers keep finning, we create all kinds of nasty looking models, like the famous one-legged diver, right? So if you're finning, right, one of your legs might disappear, or even worse, you might be the no-legged diver. Right? So it's very important that you make sure that both fins are visible. So when you're in the photo, you want to make sure that those fins are not moving, but are actually controlled so that they're both nicely visible. So here we've got a nice photo in a profile where you can just see both fins, which makes the diver look natural. Here we've got the fins swimming, which is okay, but they're not moving too crazy. So you still have a natural position that shows all the, arms, uh, the legs of the diver. You can also put the fins down, as long as they're all visible, it's all good. So this is a different kind of approach, but still I can see both fins, so it looks natural to me. You can also freestyle your whole body position. So in this picture, uh, the, uh, the woman is expressing uh, happiness to see the manta ray or imitating the manta ray. Same here with the whale shark in, in the Maldives, you can see it has a sense of enjoyment. The, the, the diver, even though it's far away from the picture, adds to the, the, the image uh, that you're trying to create. Here, this girl is celebrating to see a, a, a whale shark. You can also do that, you know? So that is expressing a, a motion and you're freestyling your body position. You can take it really far, like we did here in the Maldives when we're trying to dress up as, as clowns, but you know, you can take it any which way, but what you try and do is create a story that can be taken in the photo. Now let's talk about bubbles. We've all learned that we cannot ever stop breathing, but bubbles are ugly in the photo. That's just how it is. You can see this picture of the whale shark, and then there is this huge bubble mess around the diver. It's unfortunate, but bubbles can destroy our pictures. So we're gonna have to be strict about this. You cannot be blowing bubbles in the photo, right? So here, a total mess like that totally destroys the picture. So what we need to do is we need to control our bubbles. Here is a nice effect that I like. It really looks like when the bubbles go evenly out, it looks like you can have bubbles coming out of your ears. So unfortunately, that's not something that we can do. So therefore you need to control your bubbles. And the best way to do that is what I call burst exhale. So what you wanna do is you wanna breathe in really, really slowly so that you have a long time with no bubbles. And then you exhale like this. You blow out all the bubbles in one go and then start slowly breathing in, but really, really, really slowly, so that the photographer has time for those bubbles to, to rise out of the picture, and then preferably take a photo with no bubbles inside. Here you've got a perfect picture, there's a few bubbles left, but essentially this is a good picture where we have the shark and the diver and no nasty bubbles in the way. So make sure you consider those. When we take our famous group shots at Inside Divers, we always take a group photo underwater. You can see here, this is one of my records. This is 19 people in the photo. Nobody's blowing bubbles. My trick is with that is I coach in advance where we say underwater, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to count down and people start breathing in. And at three, the first row, exhale. Then the second row, exhale. And then the last row, exhale. And then we wait for those bubbles to rise and then I take my photo, right? So this is an important thing. You need to brief your buddy. You need to tell him where he needs to be. So generally, that's easier if you tell him in advance. So if you are underwater, it's very hard to position. You can point to things, but it's quite hard to tell him where to be. Also, the body position. Do you want the fins to be in one direction or in the other? It's something you want to communicate underwater, but it's very difficult. So it's better if you tell them in advance, if you take a photo like this and like that, I would like you to be on that side looking in or etc. So it's better if you brief your body before the dive how you would potentially use him. The fins directions is the other one and finally the bubbles. So generally when I dive with people for the first time, I tell them all these things so that we can make better photos together. 
but if you're underwater, you actually also need hand signals. These hand signals allow you to communicate what you are trying to do underwater. So lots of different uh, hand signals are there. Of the obvious ones is up, down, left, right, this way or that way, little bit down, etc. These are hand signals that you might want to be using. Signs, for example, like this. This is the sign for your fins. I want your fins to be on this side, or I want your fins to be on that side. Other people might have different signs, but my signs are like that. Another one that's very important is this. This means no bubbles, okay? By that I don't mean hold your, uh, hold your air in, by that I mean just don't blow bubbles. That means you could slowly be breathing in, but don't make bubbles in the picture. Sometimes I'll actually ask you to release bubbles, so I'll be like, and the bubbles are supposed to go out of the picture and now hold the bubbles and we have to wait for the bubbles to rise and then I can take the photo. So now we come to the close model approach. Now we have to look at more things. We also have to look at the facial expression and we need to see that the whole face also looks good. There are two different kinds that I want to differentiate. The one is the holiday picture you see on the left and the other one is where we're actually modeling. Both pictures are equally important. Holiday pictures are also important. This lady now has a nice photo of herself with a clownfish. But the lady on the right is actually cooperating with me to take a good modeled photo. So we're going to discuss both because there are things that you need to know about both of them. So in the holiday snap, right, this is a good example. We also don't want to have bubbles, of course. We want to convey a nice, happy emotion. Don't look like this, like this is a good friend of mine, but he always looks very mean. We often look very angry underwater. You know, we've got the regulator in our mouth and our mask presses our face in a, in a certain way. So make sure you try to look more friendly than that. Or this gentleman here looks a little bit like he's surprised by me. He doesn't look like he's happy or anything. So that's not a good position. What is a good position is this. This is Sarah from Girls at Scuba and she's generally very good at making very friendly, positive faces. Right, so here you can see a sense of uh, joy conveyed in the picture. This one as well, you know, a dive master, she knows how to look happy in the picture. Some people maybe shouldn't look happy, like this guy, a good friend of mine, but you know, smiling didn't work out for him. Neither did it really work out for her very much. So some people can't smell, uh, smile very well just because, uh, you know, their mask is not making a good face afterwards. So for those people, you need to smile with your eyes. Like I always like to say, make sure you smile with your eyes. Smiling with your eyes will allow you to convey the message without anything doing with your mouth. And I've recently found out that that is called smize. And some famous person called Tyra Banks actually has been talking about smize a lot. So now I'm always talking about smize is when I say smile with your eyes is quite important. So these two people are now smiling with their eyes and that's successful. Another thing that's important is that your mask is open. So if your strobe light can't reach the mask, you get a black face. So that means even if you're looking at the subject, your mask should be facing to the camera, making sure that the light can come in. Here you have the frontal view. That's quite easy, right? So the light can travel in quite nicely. But if you have your mask in an awkward position like this lady, the mask is too high up. Right? and actually we're photographing the forehead, then we can't use this photo, even if it's a holiday snap. Or this guy has a foggy mask, so that is also not useful. So you actually need to maintain your mask, make sure that your mask is actually in the right position, it's clear, it is positioned towards the camera, you can actually look at the dome, my dome, in the wide angle dome, you can check your reflection and see what you look like. And I've heard from women that it is good to wear mascara, waterproof mascara, because that will make your eyes look pretty. You can also freestyle. So here's me freestyling on a reef in Tubataha, right? So obviously you can do all kinds of funny stuff, but that is all in the holiday snap arena. Now let's talk about the models. So if you're now talking about modeling, that means the diver that you're diving with is helping you make a picture and it doesn't look like he's interacting with the camera. He is actually being taken a picture of. So you can see this diver here is not looking at the camera and is a sense of exploration going through these a glass fish and bikini atoll is what we're trying to cover here. The eyes are in there a help to guide the user towards the main subject, in this case the stalactites. And the eyes therefore are quite important. So when you are a model you want to help the uh, you want to help the viewer 
look in the right direction. So here uh, on the Nippo Maru and Truck Lagoon, you want to have the diver actually looking at the telegraph rather than looking at the camera, because that is absolutely the wrong way. If you're looking not onto the subject or somewhere else, like into the camera, that's wrong. You want to be looking at the subject. That is what you're going to make a good photo, right? So here you get some examples of divers just looking into the right direction. In the one side in Chinchoro, you see the guide looking at the crocodile. On the other hand, you see a diver in truck lagoon looking at the fish he's shining at. You can also make bodily and facial expressions, making it look very cool. Like this guy or this guy. That's trying to look cool and that makes a nice photo. So why not act it out? Try to act out the situation. So this guy is obviously making a uh, sort of a, a, a an afraid face of the bull shark, but why not act it out? Make it interesting. This lady looks like she's concentrating on photography. That's not true, she was just doing her safety stuff, but she's acting it out for me. This lady is pretending she didn't see the tiger shark coming, so that's also acting out. And this is me swimming out of a cloud of sand, and that's also acting it out. So why not do things like that where you can make an interesting photo? Finally, I also want to point out, make use of your torch. The torch is very useful, obviously in rec, in Rex, everybody has a torch, but you can use it also on the reef. The torch guides the viewer's eyes again towards the, the subject, the main point. So in this photo, we've got a little Empire logo there, and the diver's torch is helping guide the eyes of the viewer towards that subject. Same here. In some situations, if the diver is far away, the torch beam won't actually uh, come out very strongly, but it can balance out the picture. It can provide an additional source of light, not in terms of lighting something up, but just balancing out uh, the, the photograph by having another light in there. And that is essentially a nice little feature if you have a small torch it, or video lamps, like in this picture, is just adding an additional element to not only being right as a model in the position, but also adding that light, creating an additional layer to the photograph. So also here, that needs to be briefed. You really need to talk to people before the dive about your facial expressions, that make sure that people know what you're talking about with facial expressions, how the mask needs to be, the no bubbles, the torch direction, all of these things you should be uh, talking about before the dive, so to make sure that the divers know what they're doing. And all of this, once again, needs to be done with hand signals. If I want you to look at the subject, I will say, look at the subject. This could be, you know, this tiny fish, or it could be coral. So if I'm saying this there, that means I don't want you to look at my camera, I want you to look at the subject. There might be other signs, like your facial expression, you know, I might be doing for smiles, or I might be saying look at your subject, or uh, bubbles, any of these would be signs. And if you're diving with your buddy, or you're diving with somebody you don't know, you want to talk about these things before your dive. You want to say, hey, I'm a photographer, I might be using these and these signs for underwater communication if you want to be part of my photos. And so it's better if you brief them in advance what this and that and that might mean. So essentially, that's some of the things you want to do before every dive. Make sure your buddy knows what you plan on doing with him. And of course, don't forget to just have fun when you're diving together, modeling for each other, because it is the essence of why we do this sport and why we miss it so much during this hard period. So with that, I'd like to say, Thank you very much for uh, joining. Thank you very much for listening in. Uh, please follow me on Facebook uh, and YouTube. We've got lots of instructional videos on YouTube, so please uh, tune in there or find uh, us uh, or myself on Instagram. That was it. Thank you for listening into this talk at this year's ADEX 2020. Hope to see you next year and have a good year ahead.